let's talk tips. Pet pet tips, that is, and pet pets themselves. So if you go into any sort of biochemistry or molecular biology lab, you're gonna see a lot of pet pets in a lot of different forms. Um, so we're talking about just like micro pet pets, which are go-to tools. Um, we have our pet pet lens, which can do bigger volumes. Uh, Multi-channels, which will allow you to do multiple ones at once. A repeater pipette. Um, this is going to let you do the same volume over and over and over. Um, and it's a really cool thing, which our this my the lab admin now has, which is like it's expandable. It's so cool. It's like just clip tip things, but you like put it in and then it expands, which can be super duper helpful if you have your wells or whatever are a different volume size, like like the cross. Um, so with any of these, then you're also going to have options about the tips. So when it comes to the, just like the micro pipetters, so these, the tip sizes are, the sizes are going to depend on the size of the pipette. We typically refer to these pipettes, we talk about them in terms of the size of their biggest volume that they hold. Um, so see, this one says 200, that we would call as a P200, which means it can do up to 200. Um, microliters in volume and it's 20 to 200. Um, common set that you'll see is a P2. Um, those are more rare, um, but very, very helpful if you're doing um, small volumes. A P10, P20, uh, P100, and a P1000, which was a mil because a microliter is a thousandth of a milliliter of a milliliter. It's a millionth of a liter. Um, so those are kind of the common sizes you're going to see, and then each of these pipettes is going to have its own um, its own distinct size of box. So like a P200 will have a box of 100. Um, so a P10 and a P2 typically use the same size tips, though. Sometimes you'll see like XL on a tip box. Um, that's just going to refer to like extra long. Those extra long pipettes can be really great when you're trying to get to the bottom of tubes and that sort of thing. They're not quite as long though as the like gel loading tips, which are really long and skinny, so you can get into the bottom of a gel well. Um, in addition to having just like different size tips. Um, oh, and also along the sizes, you always want to use the smallest pipette that you can do that is going to be the most accurate. So if you wanted to pipette, say, 9 microliters, you could do that with a P10 or a P20, um, but it would be better to do it with a P10 um, because it's going to be more accurate when you do the smaller size. Um, so if you look at just like normal tips, Normal tips and then filter tips. Filter tips, they have this like literally have this filter in there. This can be both to protect your sample from your pipette and to protect your pipette from your sample. So a couple of times that I commonly use them is when I'm like working with RNA. Um, then I want to protect my samples. Um, so there's like RNAs, which are like RNA chewers, um, the dirt and all this various stuff because little microbes in us and stuff we secrete it so that we can kill um, invading like viruses and stuff before they can actually get into our cells. Um, but those can chew up the RNA that we're trying to study and so filter tips are going to help prevent anything that was on the top of the pipette. So when you put your pipette, the filter is going to prevent anything that was on the top of your pipette from actually getting into your sample. So in addition to RNAs, we have to be worried about things like um, cross-contamination. If you're doing things with different, um, like even if you're working with DNA or something, you're doing some sort of sequencing, you don't want anything from the pipette to get into your sample. Um, so when you're, that's another thing, like when you're pipetting, you shouldn't this is also going to prevent anything that you're pipetting from getting up onto the tip of here, which is really important if you're doing working with like radioactivity. You don't want that radioactivity to get into the top of here. Sometimes you might accidentally use the wrong size of a tip, and you learn the hard way because um, then it'll actually like get stuck in the filter. Um, but one time that things can really get stuck up there is if you're doing something viscous or something um, volatile. Um, so like ethanol or ethanol or something, it has a tendency to like splash back up, especially if you haven't like pre-wet up and down beforehand, um, or if you're not using like 
there's techniques more in other posts, but then it can get onto the tip and then that can get onto your other samples. Um, typically these like stroke heads, the ones that we use with the um, pipette, these have like a filter plug as well, so you're not sucking all the way up, which is more of an issue with these because with these you basically just control the up and down speed, um, and but it'll just keep sucking. That's like, it's basically, people used to just like literally like suck pipettes up with their mouth. Um, this basically just does that. So it's not like gonna stop at a given volume, whereas these will stop um, when they like are above their volume. Um, when it comes to actually the tips themselves, so sometimes they come in like pre-packed in boxes. Sometimes they come in these racks where you refill um, the box. These I have like filled so many times. <laughs> Um, because these racks just kind of like tip over. I used to have them above my bench. Um, but other times they come, like, so with those, what you do is basically, those aren't for these tips, but you, the, the racks come out and then you replace them with the one from the stack um, and then put the top one back on here. Um, when you take those, when you take the tray, trays out when it's empty, so when you have like an empty tray, these just come right out. And what's really nice is that don't get rid of them. Instead, you can tape them together and now you have a PCR tip, um, a PCR tube rack. Um, and so then sometimes though, like if you want to sterilize them, you can then um, autoclave them. So we often put those in here and then we like autoclave them and this will sterilize them but it won't kill RNAs um, so RNAs um, those are like the proteins that chew up RNA and they're really 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 sturdy so I've talked about this more on other posts and stuff but so then if you if you need your things to be RNAs free you're going to want to um, purchase ones that are specifically RNAs free um, unfortunately, this means more waste because you're having to buy these like individually packed things um, rather than having just the racks, which you can then refill. Um, but you can make reuse these boxes for handy little holders for various gadgets. Um, in undergrad, we actually I actually had to like we had, you can buy like the pipette tips in bulk and actually like refill these and then sterilize them and stuff big pain the racks make things a lot easier so you have like your racks and then you have the boxes and then you have like the bulk where they're just individually packaged um so those are the tips um so note that like a lot of different like brands of pet pets there's like so that they're like re um typically they're usable with different brands of pipettes um they're like standardized or whatever the yellow ones are typically like a 20 or a 200 uh, red is typically 10, uh, blue is typically a thousand, but the, that'll all, that can vary from um, thing to thing. Um, but the important thing is that you know what size, what size is what and you use the right size with your pipette or else you're going to potentially like suck up into your pipette tip and things like that. Um, for also for like the multi-channel they're not going to work with all of them so the multi-channels are more picky about which ones that they work with um, so make sure that you're getting the right ones and that you're using the right ones um, with your multi-channel um, so the multi-channel they come in different sizes as well just like the others but they just have more um, they have you can do more at once because they have like a whole like row of them um, a repeater pipette these things are super duper useful um, so basically how it works is they come in different sizes, um, and then you snap it down, push this down, and now you can change the step size, the number of steps, and it'll change the step size. Um, so you, before you start, you pull this all the way up, and then, like, squirt up a little bit at the beginning, that's not going to be like a full sample, and then you, each time you push down, it'll give the set volume. And they still have different set volumes depending on the size of these. Note that sometimes, like for the smaller sizes, you can go by like one microliter or, or two microliters. But then when you have the bigger sizes, you can only go by like 10 or 20 or 30 or something. Um, and so the different the tip size is going to de de determine which what size of steps that you can actually do. So it's not like you could use the biggest size but still do one microliter increments. That'd be cool, but you can't. 
Um, and yeah, I think that's the basics of different pipettes. Um, they also have you have just like your classic pasture pipette, those glass ones with like a little bulb. Um, you can use bulbs with bigger pipettes and stuff like that. You have transfer pipettes, which are little plastic ones that you're not actually using to measure, just to kind of like transfer some liquid um, from place to place. Uh, but these are the pipettes that we use all the time in the lab, and so now you know what you're going to be looking at when you go into a lab. I remember I discovered like the pipettes in undergrad, and then I discovered the multi-channel in grad school, and then I discovered the tip here it's a postdoc um so yeah so hope that helps someone and have fun in the lab